Hello, Frankie. How are you? What's up, man? How you doing? Doing good. Thank you. Um, obviously, you had a solid debut at Bantamweight last year. Dropping down again, how has the weight cut and everything been this second time around? Yeah, pretty much the same as last time. So far, so good. Uh, you know, I'm right in striking distance for tomorrow morning. I know you've trained with Marlon Moraes in the past, so you know how good he is. What did you think of Corey's win over him in October? Yeah, anybody can get a win over Marlon. Uh, I, I know they're they're a legit fighter. Um, you know, I thought that fight was uh, was, was rather close until the, the moment when he got knocked out with that uh, spinning heel kick. There's a lot going on at Bantamweight. A lot of big names are going to be competing soon. What do you think should happen next for the belt after Aljo and Peter Jan and everyone else? Yeah, I think the winner, me and Corey, are, are right there. You know, uh, you know, put on a good performance, and uh, you know, could be fighting for that belt next. How do you get the job done against Corey on Saturday? Just be myself, go out there, listen to my coaches, and, uh, and stick to the game plan. Thank you, Frankie. Good luck. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Alistair Bishop with MMA Republic. Frankie, how are you, sir? Good, man. How are you doing? Good. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Frankie, the first question I want to ask you, when it comes to weight classes, we've seen – the trend mostly be guys going up in a weight division. You've uh, made the way down a few now. What what initially sparked the move to 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 bantamweight? Uh, you know, my coaches have been you know getting on me to go down for for many many years, and you know having a couple of losses there at the end of forty five. I thought you know for time if I was going to do it, now, now would be the time. And w would you say that that's almost reinvigorated your career, almost like a like a blank, uh, fresh start? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, new challenges, um, you know, guys that are more my size, finally, you know, first time in my career fighting guys that are that are my weight, even though, of course, he's a lot taller than me, but uh, he's not going to be that much heavier than me. And you, you mentioned Corey there. Did you ever imagine that you'd, you'd be three weight divisions down from where you started um, going alongside a, a youngster on the rise also with title aspirations and you're almost within or, or, almost within reach of a title shot? Yeah, I mean, I, I always set high goals for myself. So no matter what weight division I'm in, you know, uh, I've always been at the top. And, you know, a band of weight's no different. And you, you mentioned he's a bit taller. Do you think stylistically this is a, a good matchup for you to remind people of, of the skills Frankie Edgar still possesses? Yeah, anytime you fight a guy that's ranked as high as Corey, uh, it's coming up in the, in the ranks and you get a, good, a win over him, that's going to definitely uh, show everybody that I still belong. And the last one for me, Frankie, but bit of a double sword. I, I wanted to ask about the longevity in your career. What do you, what do you credit that to, and what advice would you have for for youngsters on the way up? You know, uh, I think what I credit to that is is the team I surround myself with, uh, my passion for fighting, and uh, how I take care of myself. I'm, I'm always in the gym, always trying to improve. And uh, I, I guess just to uh, what I give the to, to guys coming up is make sure you love this sport. If you love this sport, you know. It's like that adage, you know, you don't work a day in your life. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Best of luck. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Damon Martin with MMA Fight. Hey, Frankie. Uh, I know you just uh, yesterday celebrated your 14th anniversary for your first UFC fight. Uh, I think I remember talking to you around that fight. What do you remember most about that night with Tyson Griffin and earning a Fight of the Night award in your first uh First appearance in the UFC. Ah, uh, what I remember most. Um, I remember winning the fight and going up in the stands because that's what I used to do back in Jersey when I, you know, local shows. I'd win the fight and I go up in the stands and people started grabbing at me, asking for my picture, and I was, I was taken back, man. I, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> can, can you kind of put into words like when you when you get tagged in something like that? Because I know we've talked a lot about your career longevity and the fact that you're still at the top of a division. You know, 14 years later. I mean. I know maybe you'll think about this more when your career is over, but is it kind of crazy to think about the body of work you have put in over these last 14 years? It is for sure. You know, you, you don't want to go back and smell the roses too much, but it, but it is good to look back and see, you know, what you accomplished in your career. And, you know, I do have quite a resume and the fact that I'm still here spanning three weight classes is definitely a testament to the type of person I am. I know winning another divisional title has been a, you know, a big goal of yours for a while now, but I'm curious, 
A lot of people say, you know, you are a future Hall of Famer. I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. But but does that matter to you? Do things like that matter to you in terms of when it's all said and done, the way you're remembered for your career? Like, do you want to be a Hall of Famer or do you not want to campaign for something like that? Uh, I don't think you, you're supposed to campaign for it yourself. People should put you there because you deserve it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, when you're all said and done, you do have the accolades and you're recognized for, for what you have accomplished is, is always nice and it's something I will enjoy later on in life, but I'm not going to sit there and uh, and campaign for it. I think other people will have to do that for me. When you look at your resume, I mean, you know, obviously nothing against anybody else who's ever fought in the UFC, but but do you feel like that's been a big mark of your careers? Because when you come in on day one, you're fighting a guy in Tyson Griffin who had a lot of hype in him, you know, day one coming in and fighting a guy like that. And I don't know, that you, I, have you ever faced an unranked opponent? I'm trying to think like throughout your entire career, it seems like you've always faced kind of like the top guys, which is, Kind of rare these days, isn't it? Yeah, you know, uh, that that's what kept me uh, on my toes. You know, everybody I fought has been great. Um, you know, it kind of gives you that little bit of fear of, of, of who you're fighting. It makes you sure you're preparing the right way and, you, and you're constantly working on your skills. And last one for me, I know this isn't the fight you're ahead of you with Corey Sanhagen, but, you know, considering everything you've gone through, and everything you've you've done, switching divisions, now you're here at Bantamweight, what would it mean to you at this point in your career? You know, 39 to, to become a UFC champion again. Like, what would that mean to you now, thinking about your first one? When you when you beat BJ Penn, you held that title for the first time. What would it mean now to become a champion? Yeah, that, that would just be amazing. It would be the cherry on top of all of it. You know, uh, everything would come full circle. It would show that all the work I put in through the years, you know, came to fruition, and, and, and I was able to achieve my, my ultimate goal. But, you know, first things first, I got to take care of Saturday. Thanks, Frankie. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Cody Cruz with Florida MMA. Hi, Frankie. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, sir. Thank you for your time. Uh, well, you've said in multiple interviews that you'll go till the wheels fall off, that your goal is right now to get back into title contention. Looking back at all the roads travel in this conceptual vehicle, what would you say are the fondest experiences fighting for the UFC? Uh, you know, the experiences, uh, obviously the big wins, winning the title are always great, but, you know, just the people I met along the journey is, is probably the best thing and, uh, and the experiences that come with that. You know, uh, this is a great sport. I, I love what I do. I get up in the morning and uh, I'm not dreading going, going to the gym. Well, since you've been very adamant about your mentality and goals to this day, has the talk of retirement has been something more recurring at this stage of your career? Is it, uh, I don't know, maybe this kind of response that you're giving till the wheels fall off. It's some sort of a slap on the table, so to speak, on what you really want to do with your career. Yeah, it just comes with getting older in sports. You know, uh, you know, I'm sure Tom Brady hears it all the time. I've been hearing it probably since I've been 35, and uh, it's just what it is, you know. And, um, it, it, you know, nothing I can do about it. I get older, and you know, time goes by, you know. It's just what it is. And, you know, I just got to keep performing and, and not worrying about what, what people want me to do or, or ask me what I'm going to do. Well, as you said uh, earlier, you're really confident uh, coming into this fight. You respect Corey Sanhagen. Uh, how do you think the smaller cage will affect your game on game night, on fight night? I mean, do you believe that it will play to your advantage? Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I, I feel like, uh, you know, if you fight a guy in a football field or a telephone booth, the better guy should win the fight. And uh, I think I'm the better <laughs> guy, so that, that's what I plan on doing. That's a fair point, sir. Uh, you recently had a stay in Colombia in South America to treat an injury, right? Can you yes. comment on your experience getting that treatment there? What's so different about doing it in Colombia? Yeah, I was uh, in Med Medellin, Colombia with BioAccelerator. I got some stem cell treatment. Uh, yeah, the place was top notch, you know, top of the game. And, uh, you know, I definitely felt some benefits. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing see how much better it will help in, in the near future. While you were there, you had the chance to share some of your time with the young people who are part of a boxing program, as I saw. Uh, can you share some of that experience with the Colombian children? Yeah, uh, Boxio, uh, uh, pa pa Pario, Boxio, I, I may be saying that wrong, but uh, it was up in uh, Communa 13, and uh, we got to go up there and uh, see a, uh, um, you know, just young kids working on boxing, staying out of trouble, and me and Kamar Usman got to go up and, and, uh, and teach them some, some stuff and, uh, you know, working on helping them out with some, uh, some other things as well. Final question from me. We've been talking a lot about trilogies lately since uh, Connor, you know, Dustin and all that. But you, sir, you have a trilogy, a trilogy of your own, which is amazing in its own right. 
how would you say it would compare this time around your uh, trilogy to the one that we're expecting now with Connor, Connor and Dustin? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, yeah, you, you, the, Mark the trilogy was really good. Their trilogy, we'll see if it's good. I mean, they got one apiece. Me, me and Gray have a little, some, some pretty epic fights, man. So yeah, it's always good to see some uh, competitive battles. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Good luck Thank on you. Saturday. We'll take our next questions from Suma Data with Sports Kita. Hey, Frankie, hope you're doing well. How you doing? So, uh, so this will be your second fight in bantamweight. You're coming off a beautiful victory from your last fight, but now you face a form. Uh, now you face a top contender in Corey Sandhagen, who is in the driver's seat to get the title shot. But for you, do you believe that this is a title eliminator, or do you think? You need to eventually get that third victory and then aim for the title shot. Yeah, I think where I'm at in my career, a win over Corey will definitely get me a title shot. Uh, you're obviously the veteran coming into this fight, a former champion. Corey, on the other hand, is the young up-and-comer but already has a few impressive wins on his resume. What do you think are the aspects to his game that make him a dangerous opponent? Yeah, he's a dangerous opponent. He's got unorthodox style on his feet. He's got a savvy jiu-jitsu game. He's tall, long, and rangy. Um, you know, definitely pushes the pace. He's uh, he's gonna, I'm gonna have my hands full on uh, Saturday night. The bantamweight division we know is very stacked at the minute. There are a lot of exciting fighters to watch out for, yourself included. Now another former champion in TJ Dillashaw is making a return soon. What do you think of his comeback? Uh, will add to this division. Yeah, uh, it just adds more to this stack division as it is you know obviously being a former champion uh he's a very skilled fighter uh this this division's deep and it's just gonna get deeper could you possibly be uh, interested in fighting him in the future maybe yeah you know we'll see uh you know i'm kind of worried about Corey, obviously but uh you know i'm down for a big fight so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm game for anybody last question for me uh at the stage of your career you decided to drop down to band weight you've competed at 155 then at 145 and now here you are at 135 is there any secret to this longevity of yours that made you decide that you're going to drop down a few weight classes? Yeah, I think uh, the fact that when I fought at 55, I cut zero weight. At 45, I cut very minimal weight. So now I'm finally kind of cutting weight compared to everyone else. I'm probably even not the biggest guy at 35, you know, so that, that definitely gave me the ability to do that. Well, I look forward to your fight this weekend and good luck to you, sir. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Nikita Gorshin with Sport Express. Thank you. Big honor to ask you questions. Uh, oh. Frankie, only two guys in UFC history have have five fights winning streaks in two weight division. It's you and Damian Maia. It's crazy accomplishment. You won five fights in a row in lightweight and five fights in a row in featherweight. It's crazy. Uh, Frankie, my question is, in what period of time in your UFC career you were the happiest man when you was in ma maximum flow and you were the happiest man? I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been happy the whole time, man. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously there's ups and downs in your career, but I've always kept a pretty positive attitude. Uh, like I said, I enjoy what I do. Um, there's no difference between 55, 45, 35 to me. It's all the same. I'm still competing, still fighting the best guys. So it's all been a joy to me. Uh, Frank, your coach, Mark Henry, have this uh, code uh, word for some combinations. Do you remember the most funniest code that he has for you for some combination, maybe some shot? I don't know. Uh, I mean, we, we switched it up so much, and I'm not ready to give up the secret sauce. So... Uh, I'm not really going to share the codes too much, but yeah, we have, we switched it up so much. We've done, we've done uh, Korean, Japanese, Russian, uh, you know, uh, Portuguese. I mean, we've done everything. Frankie, do you remember in your career, uh, your uh, finish when you won not by uh, something by game plan, but it was uh, on a hunch, you know, but gut instinct and you won by just in second of improvisation was that such win for you you proud of uh yeah i mean I, i've had a lot of fights man so to go back and just one on improvisation i think a lot of times i've been rocked uh you know in those manor fights sometimes even in the ben henderson fights i was kind of rocked pretty good and i just had to improvise and go on some guts and glory but luckily i, I have good coaches in my corner and, and uh 
and I always zero in on them and be able to listen to, to their instructions. Frank, Frank, thank you so much. Good luck and uh, the you. win. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll take our next set of questions from Pablo Santa Maria with for the win Pops. Hey, Frankie, can you hear me? Yep, got you. Okay, uh, the first thing I want to ask you is that uh, you've been successful in lightweight featherweight and now on bantamweight. What's the main key of being, of, of have that success all over your career? I, I just think, uh, you know, approaching training in the right way, uh, taking care of my body and uh, enjoying what I do. Uh, you know, um, I definitely, uh, I definitely do everything the right way. I make sure I'm, I'm, I, I never, uh, never in that cage, not prepared. Okay. Uh, you have faced a lot of uh, big names, uh, huge fighters. I mean, uh, with good strategy and stuff like that. Where do you rank uh, Cody Sanhagen among uh, your rivals? Yeah, I mean, he's right up there with some of the best guys I fought. You know, obviously his ranking says that, his resume says that, and uh, you know, he's got a future ahead of him too in this sport. So yeah, he, he's he's one of the better best guys I fought as well. Sure. Uh, do you think your wrestling with, will be a key to get the victory? Yeah, I think my wrestling is something I try to utilize in every fight, and um, that that's something that uh, that that could definitely come to play. For sure, for sure. Uh, and what's your prediction for the fight? Yeah, my prediction is is a, is a victory. Uh, you know, I'm not really one to to sit there and pick how it's going to go or what way it's going to go, but I'm gonna get my hand raised. You're a legend, like I said before. Uh, would you like to send a message to your uh, up and coming fighters here in Latin America? Yeah, to the two fighters out there, just uh, stay in the grind, uh, get after it, and uh, no secret, no secret to success. It's hard work, so the harder you work, the the more you gain. Thank you very much for your time, Frankie, and good luck on the fight. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Augusto Nieske with Thomas MMA. Hey, Frankie, how are you? Good, man. How you doing? Great, thank you. Uh, Frankie, yesterday was the, the anniversary of your UFC debut, uh, as we have been talking. I want to know, back in those days, did you ever imagine such a successful career? Yeah, you know, I don't know, man. I, I was still working as a plumber in my first fight in UFC. You know, I think until my third fight in UFC, I was still working full-time as a plumber. Um, so I really didn't know what to expect, but uh, I always set high goals for myself. So I'm not overly surprised, but yeah, I, I don't know if I expected this. And which was the hardest part of that, that, that life, working as a plumber and, and also training for MMA? Yeah, working as a plumber is much harder, man. Uh, you know, it's, snow, it's snowing in Jersey right now, and I used to have to get up early, early in the morning and work in that cold. Uh, I'd much rather go get punched in the head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frankie, if you had to make a, a top three of the fights that you enjoyed the most in the UFC, which ones would you choose? Um, that's tough, but uh, I would say obviously winning the title, uh, the Gray Maynard yeah. fight, this, this is the third Gray Maynard fight with the finish, and um, and maybe maybe a year, a year fight. Okay, okay, and, and my last one, I'm talking about the the, the fight on, on Saturday. What do you need to be careful with Corey Sanhagen? Uh, I should have, just be careful with us. Uh, you know, his length and range and, uh, and, and his unorthodox, his, his awkwardness, I guess you could say. Okay. Thank you very much, Frank, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Jay Anderson with Kate Side Press. Hey, thanks very much, Frankie. Uh, welcome back. Just a couple for me. I wanted to start, I mean, ESPN did a, a feature on you recently where they called your success in the UFC improbable. And, uh, you know, you've been the underdog in a bunch of fights, but it doesn't seem improbable that you continue to win. Do you still feel like the underdog? Do you carry that mentality into your fights? Uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm the favorite many times in my fights, especially as, as the older I get, it seems like. So uh, it seems natural. It's, it's kind of it's kind of normal to me. I mean, uh, you know, I can't help but you know, everyone seems to bring up the fact that I'm underdog. So. I mean, that puts the pressure on this guy. You know, he's supposed to go in there. You know, if you look at the line, he's supposed to go in there and, and walk through me, which is kind of laughable a little bit. And you touched on it a little, and I, I know uh, it's putting the cart before the, the horse, but at 39, if you do get that title shot and if you do get a second reign, have you thought about what that plan would be? Would you want to stick around and defend a couple of times, or would you think, hey, you know what, now's the time to, to ride off into the sunset? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I you know, as long as I'm, 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 you know, obviously I'd, I'd still be competitive. I'm the champion. As long as my body's good, I, I'd probably still fight. And I, I, like I said, I do enjoy this. 
And last one for me, uh, you mentioned uh, football and Tom Brady. Uh, who do you think wins the Super Bowl? I'm, I'm obviously pulling for the old guy, you know, but uh, the Chiefs look pretty good. So uh, we'll see. I'm pulling, pulling for Brady. All right. Well, best of luck this weekend, Frankie. Thank you. We'll take our last set of questions from Martina Saluch with Indicate. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, thank you. I'm, go I'm good. I'm fine. Uh, so I have three questions. Uh, first of all, I would like to know, what do you think about Petr Jan, uh, Bantamweight champion, about his skills and the uh, cage game? Yeah, I think he's a good fighter, uh, very good stand-up, um, good cardio, uh, very, they're very technical fighter. Okay. Uh, how do you see his fight with Aljamain Sterling, uh, who, you, who you got in this uh, fight? Yeah, I think it's a good fight. Uh, you know, I think Peter Yan still has some things we don't know about him. Um, I think Aljo has a very good takedown game. To me, it comes down to who could establish where the fight goes. I think if Aljo is able to, to secure takedowns, he'll win. But, In your uh, opinion. Sorry. No. Then I think if, uh, if it stays on the feet, I think uh, Peter Yan will win. But we'll okay. see. Okay. And in your opinion, who's the best boxer in UFC history? Oh, I don't know. Best boxer in UFC history. James Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no uh, I would say, you know, um, that's a tough one. Matt Max is, is, is looking really good. Dustin looks really good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd say one of those guys, maybe. Okay, thank you. Thank you.